Okay, here's the Onan carburetor with the diaphragm fuel pump. We're going to remove the screws that hold the fuel pump in place. I've already loosened them with my screwdriver. I'm going to take the first one out, loosen the second one. I'm holding the other with my thumb because there's a spring that's going to come out here. Okay, so there's multiple layers here. You can find the manual online to know the order, so I'm going to point out the order for the gaskets. I'm going to lift this top cover off. You see we've got the spring onto the tab, which press onto the diaphragm. Note that the diaphragm, and this is according to the Onan manual, is positioned below the gasket. Okay, those gaskets come off. This one's already been off. It was not working. I fixed it. I thought I'd show you how I did it without having to spend $100 on a new fuel pump kit. So then the main body of the fuel pump is removed next, followed by the last gasket. And it's easy to know the order of the gasket because the gasket has a little tab that aligns with the tab on the carburetor and all the way up through the cover. So here's the fuel pump innards. And what you find a lot of times, and I know this because I've had a number of Onan engines over the years and they all develop these problems on their own, even with newer uh, fuel pump kits that I've purchased in the past, you'll find that these reeds, which are basically vacuum operated off the engine, they flex a little bit and let the fluid through, but then they spring back to almost closed the fine reed valves on this side and over here as well. Note how they basically just don't bounce much. They're just a little paper thickness maybe between the reed and the looks like a rubber type rubberized o-ring. I can flex it a little bit with my fingers but don't do it too much. Put a bend in there and it's gone. Okay so what happens is those reeds on their own lift up and they don't seal properly with the vacuum. So normally people would have to buy a new kit, but not too cheap. Anyway, I went to a wiring harness and I got some stranded wire from a 12 volt trailer plug actually. And so then I bent the piece of wire into like a little square here, slipped it in behind the reed, and then backed it all the way up as close to the rivet shank as possible. Okay, so I fished it in uh, using needle nose, but you can get it in there behind. Then, I'm going to do that here just a moment if I can figure out how to pause the camera. That would... Okay, so we try to work the wire, the little thin wire, back behind the, the reeds. You kind of have to bend it a little bit to get it into that small space. Try to pull it, try to bring it as close to this little rivet edge as possible. So I'm going to grab both. Okay, so the reed is sticking up a ways. I just need to bend it down. And so by putting this little cantilever wire in behind at the shank, I'm gonna, we're going to lay it down. I'm going to take one of the screws, the drawing screws, and hold right in the center of the reed, pressing down onto the what looks like kind of rubberized gasket material. I'm going to pull up on the wire, the little wires, to create a little bend on both sides. I'm pulling up while pressing down on the screw. What that does is it puts a small bend there which bends the reed back into a position that can stop the flow of the liquids. Okay, so now it springs back. Now you look at the reed and it is really, really snug there now versus raised up. So that solves a lot of your problems then you just reassemble. So I'm going to put it up here. Got the original gasket. Now the body. Okay. Then the diaphragm. Then the gasket. This again according to the instructions. Uh, the one I bought from the factory I had it in the wrong order. But it worked anyway. And so here's the springs. And I basically just you just carefully set this on center because we know everything. We got the tab for alignment. Put the screws in. 
Let me get them into the holes nicely. Of course, it's not going to go easily since I'm showing you. I'm going to get one started. Now they're close. Okay, that one's easier. It's going in. Alright, so now we're back together basically and we'll tighten that up with a screwdriver. Alright, good. That solves a lot of problems. And so basically the vacuum, make sure there's not a leak from the engine to through the hose that goes here because what happens, the engine creates a little vibration, a little suction vacuum, and it vibrates the diaphragm in there. And the diaphragm then pulls the fuel from this intake to fill the carburetor. Carburetor fills up, it's going to pump, 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 unless, of course, the carburetor shuts off the flow using the needle valve. But that's a whole other video. Good luck.